much does money matter right now? I mean, money is on people's mind. It yeah. it's, it scares people. It invigorates people. Yeah. Money is pretty important. As a matter of fact, I spend a lot of time thinking about other people's money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Taking care of it. Yeah, Making absolutely. sure they're okay. And, of course, that helps me be okay, too. But, um, you know, money is so important. It involves so many different aspects of your life. So today I just wanted to cover some helpful hints on money matters. Yeah, because it does. So it does. It really does. Um, So the first point I want to make is that unless your income is unlimited, you really want to live within your income limits. That's rule number one. Is there anybody with unlimited income? I mean, do you get a point where you're like, yeah, you're... Well, sure. There are entities with unlimited income. Give me an example of one that you know. I was going to say the government, but they're not very. They're not very good at that, though. They don't spend within their limits. Well, but but (laughs) yeah, I guess there is a limit to other people's money. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) That's the problem with communism. Anyway, um, the, the the problem that individuals have with this concept of living within your limits is the propensity to consume. That's a that's a financial law that says the more you make the more you'll spend, right? Uh, So the more your income goes up, the more you see things that you would like to have. And it's really difficult to um, stay on track with your financial goals if you get sidetracked with all the advertisements out there and other ways of spending your money. So Mm -hmm. propensity to consume, you want to be careful of that. If your income goes up, great, you can put money away for yourself. You can put more away than you used to. Don't think of ways to spend it all. Number two, control more of your income by strategically eliminating debt. If you have debt, the best thing to be is debt free, right? Um, it, you know, for all the cars, the credit cards, and so forth. Don't spend more than you make. Uh, if you do have credits, you know, you know, debts or whatever, uh, put together a strategy that will eliminate those debts because that'll give you more control over the income. Well, you know, and we've talked in the mortgage business, we talk about kind of good debt versus bad debt. Exactly, we talked and, about that. And, uh, you know, like a mortgage is one of those things that you might not be able to quickly pay off. Not quickly. But people who pay off their mortgage to try to get rid of that while paying a high interest rate on a car yeah. or a high interest rate on credit cards thinking they're making gains oftentimes are, are finding themselves in the wrong yeah. Arena. Yeah. And ultimately down the road, you do want to ha- have no more mortgage because it makes it easier to retire. Right. It's easier for your pension, if you have one, to to cover your income if, without a mortgage payment. Right. Because if you have a mortgage payment, let's say two thousand dollars, you really need to make taxable income of over twenty five hundred dollars to actually net the two thousand. So if you don't have a mortgage, that's two thousand five hundred dollars less income that you need to generate from your investments. Or whatever. So ultimately, it is good to be debt free of everything. That way, you have complete control of all your income. Mm-hmm. Right? So, the snowball method is really the best way to do that. So, um, where you, you pay off the smallest debt and you take that money that you were paying on that, pay, apply it towards the next larger debt, and so forth. That's the, really the fastest way to typically get completely debt free, leaving only your mortgage payment, you know, and then work on that. So, You want to also plan ahead for the major transitions in life. So marriage, children, right? When you're going to have another child. Yeah. It it takes a lot of money nowadays to raise children. So if you're going to have a larger family, and again, you know, we want to make sure that things are up to date on on beneficiaries and stuff like that. But the idea is uh, plan ahead. Career changes. You might change careers during your life. Well, in that interim, are you going to need uh, to have resources to last between jobs? So you need to plan ahead. Ultimately, you're going to uh, retire, and, and that's a, a major career change, right? Very, very big. And it lasts a long time. It can, or Hopefully. else you end up at uh, Walmart as a greeter. Well, that's, No offense to the Walmart greeters. Right, but you might want to do other things with your time. Sure. So plan Unless ahead for like that. you like people. I mean, here's why I imagine some of those guys have fun. That's true. You know what would be cool, though, is if, if you... So Walmart paid living wages. Living wages. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you could picture yourself doing charitable work, you know, or something like that, that'd be fun. Or, or a, a hobby that you really enjoy that might generate some income, sure. that kind of thing. Well, working at Walmart is basically like donating your time. Yes. Nonetheless, yes. Uh, so I mean, these are big transitions that yeah. other people are going to go through because yeah. you maybe had a higher paying job before. Right. Yeah. You never know if your next job is, they may not have a pension. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So then you've got to, it puts more pressure on you to accumulate the assets that you'll need later on because you've got to switch from you working to money at work. You've got to go from accumulation to distribution. So you've got to really plan that out. And when you're doing that, you got to think about taxes, right? And we can talk a little bit more about that. But ultimately, down the road, way, hopefully far down the road, you may incur a major illness along the way. Sometimes people become disabled and they, they have to stop working. So you, if you got some coverage through your employer or personal disability, that'd be helpful to have. Because if nobody else is going to be able to pay you for working, you still need income to pay bills. Sure. And no matter no matter how debt-free you are, no matter what, right. you're still going to have to have some source. You know, one of the fastest ways that I've seen estates blow up is, you know, a person has all these assets and they planned out retirement real good, but you know what? They didn't protect themselves against that long-term illness. And, you know, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year coming out of an IRA account, that's not enough. You know, you can go through $150,000 a year out of IRA assets to net enough to cover the long-term illness. But if you have other sources that you've planned ahead on set up beforehand, that'll preserve your assets more effectively, especially if it comes in tax-free when you need it in that manner. Sure. And then, of course, ultimately, you're going to leave everything behind. So you need to plan ahead for that. And what's going to happen? So be, be financially independent at some point so that way you can be helpful to other people rather than depending on others economically so ultimately it's it's so much better to give than to receive so if you're in a position to to do that you know along the way it takes little decisions and, and correct decisions every decision has a consequence mm -hmm. so you just want to make sure that those decisions are cumulative in a positive way yeah you know we had talked about paying off cars or, or houses and whatnot. I st coming from the mortgage industry and, and providing debt for people to buy houses. Sure. I still think the number one reason that people are unable to save money is cars. I think people, they pay off their car. Yeah. And we see it all the time. Yeah. Oh, I just paid off my car, so I'm going to go buy a new one. No. It all, it, it happens all the time. Right. I mean, you must see it. And then, sure I do. and nowadays, New cars are like eight or nine hundred dollars a month. I mean, they're yeah. very expensive. Right, right. For, I mean, for a, a, not all new cars, but mm -hmm. you know, a lot of cars. I mean, even mm -hmm. even by the time you go in for the one on the ad, that's two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars yeah. a month. That's if you like the steering wheel and the windows. Yeah. Sure. It's five hundred dollars a month. I mean, it's it's quite the. It's, the, it's a very expensive thing to buy new cars. It is, but the better way to go about it is pay that five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred dollars a month before you get the car. Put it into an investment account, draw cash, and pay cash for the vehicle. That way, interest is working for you, not against you. Mm -hmm. Right. So, plan and you actually ahead. save money for a car rather yeah. than borrowing money for yeah. a car. See, so that's the whole thing of planning ahead for those major planned major expenses and the major events in life. So, as a matter of fact, we talked earlier you, in your monologue, you talked about, or well, you and Heather talked about vacations and how important those are. Let me make sh just make a suggestion here. Um, what if you were to skip one vacation and use that time and those resources to actually update your estate plan, your documents, your will, your health care directive? your beneficiary designations, your ownership arrangements, review all these things, your legacy instructions. You know, if you put as much effort into that as you did into your vacation, there'd be a lot more heirs that would think more highly of you because they're not left in a financial mess when you leave it behind. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So oh, absolutely. Just as a suggestion, people put it off and they put it off, you know. Well, I, in, in some ways to defend the people. <laughs> uh, the, it, it is a very complex and time-consuming thing that is also constru misconstrued or construed as work. Yes. Um, and so there is a diff – it's difficult to not only spend your free time, right, your, your free time doing those things, sure. but also to find out, you know, oh, guess what? You don't have enough money. So not only did I not take my vacation, I also got to find out that I'm not saving enough, and I, now I'm more stressed than I was, and now I feel like I should go back to work. Yeah, I, I just I get it. You know, sure. I get the uh, finances have become very complex, they as have. you said, very yes. complex. Um, and it is a good idea. You know, you have to get your financial house in order. Sure. And that's probably why a lot of people feel the pinch now yeah. is because they don't. Well, you know, the discovery of that, though, as <clears throat> as you say, you know, it might pressure you, make you feel like you're behind the eight ball. But 
but what a good discovery that is because then you can do something about it. At least you can try a jump shot. Jump shot. Well, you know. Jump over the eight ball, you know. The sure, stick. sure, sure. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Get an inheritance. <laughs> you know, don't play the lottery, though. Yeah, okay? right? Well, that's my retirement plan, Glenn. No. No, I'm just no. kidding. No. Uh, I am more of the, if you're going to win the lottery, you have to buy tickets kind. Yeah. You buy yeah. tickets? No, I don't. But, but <laughs> on, <laughs> no, I, I highly recommend against that. The idea is... Let's talk about taxes just for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because I, you need to be aware of if you're going to be serious about sending money into the future that you will need later on, you need to think about tax issues. Okay, so if there are ways that you can reduce your taxes now but also control income taxes later, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah, especially on both ends. Yeah, because – and it takes more than one – tool to do that. A combination of tools would be helpful, like an IRA account and a Roth IRA account. You can't write off the Roth IRA now, but it grows tax-free and you don't pay tax later on when you take it out. So when it comes time to pay cash for that vehicle and you're 75 years old, then you can take some out of your tax-free Roth IRA and some out of your regular IRA and control the income tax that you pay. But unless you have the Roth IRA, you don't have the tax control. So having a combination of tools, you know, and, and there are different ways that you can pile money up tax deferred. You can use annuities. Those are fixed interest or variable interest. You can use life insurance um, because that you can you have access to the money that's built up in there um, for usually a net interest cost of less than 2%. And then you can put it back in again. So, and then if, if you don't uh, live to retirement, basically the life insurance pays off to your family. The thing is, is there are different tools that you can use to accumulate money systematically for the future and be more secure and, and financially independent. Well, and it's pretty hard to be organized around these things if you don't even know what the tools are. Right. And it's very hard to focus on any of them individually, right. similar to, you know, you think about building a house. I yeah. mean, you have to know what a hammer is, you have to know what a nail is, and then you have to know how to use the hammer. Exactly. But you have to get to that point where at least you understand what the tools are yes. so that you can focus on them right. and to get from point A to, you know... I don't know how far you want to get, X, Y, or possibly Z.